Happy first Friday and happy Fridays with Feidelman. Today's topic is understand your parents. I'm Cheryl Feidelman, life coach, trauma healer, writer, and newly a stand-up comedian. <laughs> I'm trying to hand at stand-up comedy, so included in the email with this video is my first official stand-up set at the comedy store a couple weeks ago somebody recorded it on, on their cell phone so it's an email if you want to check it out um so today's topic again is understand your parents so many different ways in which that we can look at this the most important way i'm going to kind of save to the end because i want to talk about a few things before i get there so Understanding your parents is, is so vital to getting to know yourself and getting to know yourself is the most important, you are the most important person that you need to get to know. You need to get to know how you operate and why you operate that way and what's automatic for you and what is, seems as if it's the circumstance that's giving you your reality and where is it that you are actually consciously or unconsciously the architect of your reality? So when you get to know your parents, because any trauma that you've received from your parents, however your parents operated, whatever trauma they did not heal, it has been passed on to you to heal it. And it will be keep being passed on through the generations until someone heals it, and then that won't be passed on again. So, so any unhealed generational trauma you're carrying with you. You have great, great, great parents all the way down to your parents and all the way down to you. So a lot of what we, a lot of the trauma we have, some of it, we actually can't even point to a, an event in time where that trauma sort of was birthed into your nervous system because a lot of it we just came in with. So we don't always actually have to find the actual origin of the traumatic impact or reaction. So when we get to know our parents, um, what their childhood was like, what traumatized them, how they demonstrated their unhealed trauma from anger to addiction, to narcissism, to codependence, those are all responses to their traumatic upbringing or something traumatic that happened in their childhood. And our nervous system then soaks in their unresolved stuff. So that's one reason why it's really, really, really important to get to know your parents because what they did to you or said to you or didn't do to you or didn't say to you or how they treated you was not personal. Um, is my Wi-Fi. Sorry about that. Um, it wasn't personal. It had nothing to do with you. But as a child, we take it personally. So when we start to look at, oh, that actually had nothing, the way they were reacting and responded to me had actually nothing to do with me. What it had to do was, was them. It had to do with them and how they operate with life and what they were given or not given or how they were mistreated or what they were ripped off from from their parents, right? Now, getting to know and understanding your parents, I wouldn't equate it to forgiving them, right? So that's, I think, a whole nother conversation, forgiving your parents. Certainly, it's easier to move towards forgiving them when we start to understand them Oh, he, they actually didn't have a choice uh, to do that thing that they did because it was so unconscious for them. They hadn't yet healed the trauma. Once you heal your trauma, your behavior then becomes conscious. Before you heal your trauma, your behavior is, it's like you're just like a robot to your trauma. You're just doing what your trauma is telling you to do. You're like subservient to your, your, um, the triggers in your nervous system and where your nervous system was programmed and set between the ages of zero and eight, you're just sort of subservient to that way of being that worked for you when you were a kid. Until you start to heal it and you become conscious, then you have other choices through which to operate, react, treat yourself and treat others and make decisions, relationships, jobs, etc. 
So where was I? So understanding your parents is distinct from forgiving them and, 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 and helps forgive them. But it's important to understand them to understand yourself. Um, the other, and another <clears throat> reason why, the other thing I want to bring up about understanding your parents is also doesn't mean you have to be friends with them, right? Some people, like, they don't want to understand their parents because they're, I don't want to be friends with them. I don't want to hang around them just because I understand them, you know, or, or understanding them or taking the leaps to understand them would mean that they now have to become your friend or something which also is not necessarily true. The understanding them is really, I want to just keep it in a, um, just keep it in, in a very specific, the ver a very in specific intention, right? The intention isn't to forgive them or becomes friends with them, although that's a wonderful byproduct and kind of another conversation, but we are understanding them so that we can understand ourselves, which again is the most important person to understand is you and the and huge, huge, ginormous aspect and access to understanding yourself is understanding your parents. This is the piece that I pointed to at the beginning that I kind of wanted to get to uh, in this topic, which is I have this thought theory idea that I tell my clients, which is when you get to a certain age, it is vital that you understand your parents, whether or not you think they understand you. Because when we're kids, we want to be understood. We want them to understand us. We want them to see us. We want them to get us. Um, Notice how we operate, notice why we operate the way that we do. And when they don't, which for a lot of us, they don't, right? They don't understand us. We're longing to be understood. And then we move into adulthood, right? Like if you notice like a lot of teenagers are, the, are like, you don't see me, you don't get me, like get away from me. You're just not understanding my reality in my world. You know, when you become a teenager, you actually start putting those for, for a lot of us, we actually start start putting that desire and that anger and fight into our languaging. Like, get away from me. You don't understand me. When we're children, we actually, it's a valid actual need for them to want us and to understand us. It's a valid need for our own survival and the creation and development of our unique identity. We don't always get that need fulfilled, but it is a valid, important need for our safety, survival, and our development. When we become adults and we still are like, you know, in our 20s, our 30s, our 40s, 50s, 60s, we're still like, my parents just don't get me. Like, I want them to get me. I need them to get me. I need them to understand me. They don't listen to me. I tell them things and then they forget what I told them and I talk to them the next time and they I have to tell them again because they don't remember or they keep telling me what to do and I don't want to do that thing that they're telling me to do. And if they got me and understood me, they would be telling me something completely different to do. Well, here's the thing. When we're adults, we no longer need our parents to understand us or get us for our, for our survival or the development of our identity. We just don't need it anymore. It's not a need. It's a want, it's an egoic want, and it's a regressive want. Because when we're adults and we still want them to understand us and get us, that we're regressing. That want and that need brings out a younger version of us that is still wanting that thing from our parent. The flip side of that is when we become adults, it is now our turn to understand them understand them, get them, understand their unique identity. Who are they? Why are they saying what they're saying? What's their experience? Why are they nagging you? Or why do they want you to do that thing that you don't want to do? 
you know, completely understand their world, regardless of whether or not they understand yours. That in my work, my study, is the most important piece of growing up and maturing and becoming an adult, okay? If you're leaning more in the area of they don't understand me, and you're not getting them, I think you're ripping yourself off of a really important piece of evolving and maturing as an adult. You get to the point in your life where ha you don't no longer need your parents to validate you in order to make an important decision and move in life. You no longer need your parents to validate your dreams, your passions, um, to do something that they may think is um, not a winning way to be or not a profitable way to be or doesn't have a future in it or, you know, there's some way in which when we need them to understand us, it puts a cap on what's possible for us in trusting ourselves and actually just making the moves that we want to make. And there's plenty of other people to to um to generate permission from right like if you have a therapist or you have a coach or you have you know a friend or a mentor or something like that but to get to the point where we actually no longer need permission from our parents that is a huge crossover into adulthood and maximizing on who you can be as a man or a woman or um, the gender that you, that you identify as. At this point, when you, when you start, when the, scale, when the seesaw starts to lean more towards your understanding them way more than they're understanding you, and that's okay with you because you don't need them to understand you, this interesting thing happens where they no longer are your parent. I mean, they are your parent. But then you start to see them, sorry, my Wi-Fi, okay. But then you start to see them as like, just like another person. Another interesting human being that you were raised by. Because everybody is just walking around the earth, having kids, raising kids. And we think our parents are so significant. But when we release the significance of them and we really start to understand them, it's like, wow, you're just another, you're just another human who made a kid and I happen to be that kid. And then they just become, then they just become fascinating. Almost on some level, like an interesting an interesting research project because you're no longer getting to know them as the ruler of your world. You're now getting to know them as the ruler of their own world and how and why they go about <laughs> ruling their world in the way that they do. And often a nice byproduct of that when you get to that point is you're, you 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 have, may have them around more. You may forgive them or move into forgiveness. It's, an, it's not the intention, but a nice byproduct of being in the practice of releasing this, what feels like this carnal need to consistently need them to see you, which, which is, um, is this... Is this, I thought it was um, freezing. Um, you then get to release the codependence that you have on your parents. You know, I've said so many times that I break down codependence simply into three things, the want to be wanted, the need to be needed, and needing to prove something about yourself. And so, 
we're trapped in codependence when we want them to get us. We're constantly trying to prove, look, this is me and this is how I am. Or we don't tell them who we are, we hold it back because we don't want them to negate us. So then we become repressed or quiet. We don't share ourselves because we want to be needed by them. We want to be liked by them. And if I tell them how I really think or how I really feel, they're not going to like me. They're not going to need me. They're not going to want me. Right? So there's this like repression involved with wanting them, wanting to be seen by your parents. There could also be a lot of like overt communication, you know, arguments and disappointment and, and separation because they don't get you and they don't understand you. So doing the shift to understanding them, um, really is a move towards less codependence and more sovereignty as a human being. Oh, mom, dad, guardian, stepdad, whatever you have in your life, you are you. You're an individual human being, and I am me, and this is how I've developed, and I'm getting to know that, and this is how you've developed, and I'm getting to know that as well. Okay, um, I think I said everything I wanted to say on that topic. Um, if you have any questions, if you have any thoughts about um, releasing the need for your parents to see you or understand you, what does that bring up for you? I really would be interested um, to know that. Uh, you can put a comment in the YouTube under the video. You can email me. Um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I hope everybody had an awesome Halloween. Have a great weekend. You are awesome. Happy healing. Life is now. Bye, everybody. So I had um, another thought on this, which is understanding... When, when we're still tied to our parents, even in our adulthood, like some people are still financially tied to their parents or their parents or their babysitter or there's some, you know, legal stuff or property stuff that you still have that you're still tied to with your parents. And so, you know, there's certain situations where you may actually need them to like get your point of view in order to come to some sort of compromise or agreement in whatever it is that you are partnered with with your parents. And in that, in those cases, I would say it's even more important to understand them and get to know them because that and, and release your need to, for them to get to know you. Because then they become not your parent that you're in partnership with, but another person that you've actually known your whole life that you're in partnership with. And when we're in partnership for something in some context uh, with our parents, it, it, it often is, is, is regressive, right? Because they'll always be in the parent role and you'll always be in the child role. Or for some people, you're more in the parent role and they're more in the child role. Role. So it exacerbates your natural roles that you created your whole life to create the dynamic uh, in the relationship with your parents. That dynamic is exacerbated when you're in partnership with them. And so to unfuse un the dynamic that you have with your parents when you're in partnership, it's even more important to really super, super get to know them. Because we often, like, when we're fused with our parents, particularly when we're working with them on something, it's easy to sort of, like, manipulate the situation um, or um, increase our need, increase our regression, because that's the dynamic that we know so well and also will have us get what we need from them if we, if we keep the familiarity of the dynamic. But as we actually dis disintegrate, put our effort towards disintegrating the dynamic, 
and really getting into their world. We notice what the loss that we have, right? We start to lose maybe what we're getting, like for some people, they're financial t financially tied to their parents. And if they actually change the dynamic, then they might not get what they're getting from their parents, whether it's, um, you know, whether it's, you know, money or there's some sort of, you know, people are in so many different kinds of situations with their parents. And so it's important to look at how are you keeping the dynamic locked in because you need to keep getting what you're getting from that partnership with your parent. And that's the final thought. Okay. Bye, everybody. Happy healing.